String keys is a simple Godot add-on that allows you to automatically generate a translation file for your Godot game. Now to download it, I suggest you go to the GitHub, link in the description, go to the latest release, and download the source code. Next, go to your Godot project and right-click on the resource folder, open in file manager, then you have that there. Get the string keys download, open it up, go to add-ons, string keys, and copy the string keys into your add-ons folder if you have one, or just copy the whole add-ons folder if you don't have any add-ons yet. So just copy and paste it in, and it should automatically extract it, at least on Windows. And you can go to project, project settings, plugins, and enable the add-on. And now you should have a little drop-down menu here for string keys. We have a simple project here with some labels and buttons to represent your UI elements that you want the text translated on. So we have the text, we got tooltips on the buttons, and we got the BB code on our rich text label. Now string keys has a concept we call a tag, which is a little substring before the text that you'll actually show the player, which is meant to help the translator have some context. So this tells it that it's in the UI. You might call it menu, or you might have it be the name of the speaker of a line of dialogue. Anything will work, just giving some context. And then string keys will automatically get rid of that when translated to your native language. So if you're playing in English, this will say just label with a tag. We also have a binary scene just to show that it works with binary files. And we have a script on our main scene. It shows that you can automatically get these things called by the translate function. So we can have a variable x equals translate. This is the x variable tagged. Translate variable tag. This is a variable that is tagged. Print translate this, then print these two variables. Very simple script. So if I go into string keys, you can go to the options and look at what we have. So first we have the location of our translation file, which will be under localization translations.csv by default. We got some patterns and file types to search. So it'll by default be able to search through your GD scripts, your C sharp scripts, uh, your scenes and your resources. You can also do visual script, but it's a little bit limited. And now you can add patterns to search. Patterns can be things like the function call surrounding the string key, or it could be like the variable in a resource or scene file. So for example, if we were to open our scene file, you'll see that on this label, for example, we have text equals example label. So here we have text equals, and then quotation marks the string key. So this will find that text equals example label and put example label into your file. And then we got one for title the same way and tool tip. For function calls, you'll have the function name, then parentheses, quotation marks inside, string key. And then for like your property names in resources and scenes, you'll have the property name equals quotation marks string key. And then you have directories to ignore to optimize it a little bit and a few more options like, like the tag separator, which is by default two dollar signs just to make sure that it's something that you're not likely to use elsewhere in your project, but it's also short. The option to only add things that have the tag separator included which is useful for visual script as visual scripts patterns would be too complicated to do with the patterns we have in string keys. So you could just have only one pattern that would look like You also have like the option remove unused, which will get rid of any keys that you had in your old file if they're not in the game anymore. So say you removed a section of the game and now you don't have that text anymore. It will remove that and clean up your file for you. Modified files only, which if you're using an old file, it can only search through the files that have actually been modified and just add 
their new text into your old translation file. Now these two aren't compatible, so if I press one, it'll automatically turn off the other. So if I hit generate translation file, you'll have a new localization folder, and then we can open up this in the file manager and take a look. So we can open up in LibreOffice Calc, which is what I recommend. You can use other spreadsheet software, but this is why I'm using it, it's free. So these are the options I have. I have the separator options separated by only comma. And then when I open it up, this is what you'll see. So we have all of the text. It's in alphabetical order. So say the tags UI are gonna be grouped together. And you'll see on the English version, it automatically got rid of the tag. So it won't show UI button with tag, it'll just show button with tag. So now that we have that, we have this EN translation. So if I press play, it won't do anything yet. It still has those tags in, but if I go to project settings, localization, and then add localization, and then to translations.en translation. Then I press play, you'll see that there is no more tags, and then you'll see that it prints these without the tags from their script. So for the tag variable, it does not show the tag anymore. Next, we can open that file back up, and then add a new locale to that. So we'll say Spanish. I don't know Spanish, so I'll just go and copy these over and I'll just add a little bit afterwards just to let you know that it's been translated, that's different. I accidentally put that in EN too, so I'll put that ES to make sure that's Spanish. Save, use text CSV. And now I'll have the ES translation, so we can go to our project settings and add Spanish to our project. Also in project settings, you can go down to the bottom, go to locale and put T and put under test ES for Spanish. And that lets you test that and then you can turn that off when you're not testing. So if I press play, the stuff has all the extra letters that I put at the end. And you'll see that's also there in the printed things. Now the one exception is the rich text label, which does not automatically translate its BB code text. So you'll have to call TR on the text yourself. So as you see, I have this function here, input function, that if the input event is the E key, so if I press E, it'll set the rich text label uh, text to itself, but translated. So I call TR on the text. So if I press E, now I'll add that text at the end that I added in the translation file. So this makes it super easy to translate your project without having to manually put all these keys in to the file yourself and makes it hopefully less error prone. The last thing to note is that under the menu, there's also links to the GitHub, the documentation and the tutorial video, which is this video. So you can go to the documentation to see some of the more advanced functionality and get lists of all of the limitations and stuff and get reminders of how to use it if you haven't used it in a while.